Spy Family, the anime series, has finally started, so get ready for some explosive action-packed segments. Well, that's what you normally would expect, but today we got treated to some comedy and wholesomeness within this episode that would really melt even the hardest of criminals' hearts. Hello everyone and welcome to Anime Awakening, and today we're here to talk about episode 1 of the Spy Family anime series. Now, starting off, I have not read the manga series. In fact, I have actually read the first two chapters, and I loved it. But upon hearing that the anime was releasing soon, I wanted to hold off and go into the anime fresh. So with these reviews, I can't compare the two materials, but hopefully you'll still find some interesting things within my reviews. So, a basic rundown of the plot. The best agent available, codenamed Twilight, has been given a mission to get close to a very bad person that could de uh, decide the fate of the world slash war. Now, this person only really makes public appearances at events within this elite school. So Twilight has to make a family, gain a child and a wife, something he's never done nor had plans to do so. But if it means saving the world, then he'll do just that. Now, Twilight as a character from this first episode I thought was well written, as first of all he came across as not very likeable because of his views on things and the way the show makes you adore Anya. Twilight is a man who's been a spy all of his life. He's lived by many different names and faces to the point where he doesn't remember his own real name slash identity. So it's only right that he sees this mission as just another mission that need to be completed for the greater good. He's got no experiences with children, and his patience seems rather short, giving us many times where he thinks about trading Anya back in for another kid. Personally, I dislike that, but at the same time, I understood where the character was coming from, and could see how that mindset could be a stepping stone for him to have some character development moving forward. Of course, that development will come in the form of him learning to truly love Anya to the point where the idea of taking her back to that orphanage never occurs anymore. She'll become his daughter instead of a tool that is needed to complete this mission. And that, when it happens, will be truly magnificent. The part about him not liking seeing kids cry because it reminds him of his own childhood I thought was great as well as this too was a turning point for me in liking the character overall, as it added more layers to the character himself, and it proves that his upbringing affected who he is now. No one gave out a hand to help him when he was struggling as a child, so in that sense he had to grow up too fast. He never got to experience the joys of being a, ch being a child. And therefore, it backs up the ideas of him not understanding children. He became a spy to create a world where kids don't have to cry or face the harsh realities that he had to grow up with. And personally, I respect that. Anya, on the other hand, was so adorable from start to finish, I really want this child to succeed. Honestly, I love the presentation of this character. Seeing her goofy expressions and the emotions on display was a true delight. But underneath that fun, bubbly personality lies a dark past that really makes me both sad but also intrigued and makes me also want to see her push through and grow. She too has come from dark times, being a part of this experimental group that led her to having the ability of telepathy, which she uses to cheat in that crossword sort of test at the start of the episode. But this gift that she's received seems like something that anyone would want, but to Anya it seems more like a curse, as she feels like no one will accept her if they find out that she has this hidden ability. This plot point needs to become a way for her to develop and grow, to not only accept her powers as a gift, but also to find that special someone who she can share her ability with and kind of be comfortable around. And this could be Twilight, or it could be her mother. Either way, she needs to share that ability with someone, to the point where she overcomes that trauma that she received at the experimental facility, 
and wants to use her ability to help other people. Another complex theme that Anya was suffering from in this episode was abandonment. Of course, this is something that is occurred thanks to her being adopted four times and being returned each one of them. Of course, this would affect anyone negatively and shows why Anya wanted to stay with Twilight so much throughout this episode. She just wants a happy family that makes her feel loved and wanted. Anya is not a slouch when it comes to this. She has a goal that she wants to achieve and she'll work hard to achieve that particular goal. Look at the test for example. At first she wanted just to use her ability to copy everyone else's answers and do it that way. But when that didn't work, she knuckled down and remembered the study session that her and Twilight had before the exam and pulled through and passed because she knew the failing would affect her new life that she loved so much. Also, the time at the experimental facility caused her to lose that childhood freedom that children should grow up with. And for that reason, she hates studying because of all the studying they forced her to do. So in a sense, it kind of mirrors uh, Twilight's upbringing in the sense that Anya, for the first part of being in that experimental facility, lost that freedom, lost that childhood that children kind of need to have. And Twilight lost his because of the rough situations he was growing up in. While on the topic of the experimental group though, I thought it was interesting how they say that she was subject 7. Now this could just be like a James Bond reference, but I doubt it. Or it could mean we might see some more children at the school with the same powers or different powers creating rivals for Anya's character while she's in session. I loved how both characters within this episode helped to slightly improve each other, as Twilight helped push Anya in a more positive way to perform, while Anya helped Twilight to relax and become more vulnerable, and it's clear that she did that in this episode because he never relaxes. His missions are mission, pass it, mission, pass it, repeat. So when he finally had a small break to relax, ultimately led to him falling asleep and feeling that fatigue that's been building up for so long. The emotions on display within this episode were so fantastic. It was sweet, it was wholesome, and it added a bit of mystery and flair to the series. The animation looked amazing. I really loved the art style that came with this anime. It created a much more livelier world and gave us something to kind of just look forward to when watching the series. The character designs all look amazing as well, and as for the voice acting, I thought it was perfect, as every voice matched the character superbly. The comedy was so much fun that it had me laughing like crazy. The expressions, especially on Anya's face, were just hysterical. If we've got more comedy like this in the episodes moving forward, then I'm gonna keep returning episode after episode and just relax and have fun doing so. I've not felt this happy to watch an anime series in such a long time and it's because of that comedy aspect and the kind of sweetness that the series brings with it. I am looking for the series to get a bit dark moving forward but at the same time I'm intrigued to kind of explore the new characters and explore the world as well as a bit more of the backstories on both Anya and Twilight because they've given us a bit of a sneak preview but we want a bit more, don't we? I love the line where Anya also says Mama doesn't exist to the mailman and speaking of Mama, we need a next one in the episode. We need one in the ex next episode. That's how that line should have came out. And so I'm looking forward to see if the mother will have some crazy ability of her own or will she be okay living with a spy and a child that's telepathic? I can't wait to find out. I'm excited. Let's see it. That's going to be it from me today though. My first impressions of this series is really high and I'm enjoying it ever so much. I love the opening episode. I hope you did as well and I hope you've enjoyed this review. If you have read the manga, please don't spoil it. But if you have, let me know if this episode stayed true to the original black and white pages. Apart from that though, have a great day. Like, comment, share, all of that good stuff. And I'll see you next time. Aligator, madani, goodbye.